And Dave. And Dan. Hey, All right. We're, we're out here on Headwaters Lake again today. We're going to go ahead and do something a little bit different. We're going to be talking to those folks who are just getting into bass fishing. So we're going to cover kind of bass fishing 101, just getting started. What yep. equipment is, you know, probably the best all around equipment that you can use from your rod and reel setup to some basic lures that you can go ahead and use. They're going to give you a, you know, a high probability of catching fish. They're versatile across the country and uh really good down here so if you get down here you know hey make sure you hit up dan for a trip if you want to do uh get out here and have a ton of fun captain dan will take care of you so we're going to go ahead and jump right into this yep Let's and go. so what we're talking about today applies to uh, boat fishermen bank fishermen kayak fishermen uh you know fishing is growing uh, particularly kayak fishing that's mm -hmm. that's just exploding it's, uh, so what we're, um, all the baits and all the rods and all we cover today, applicable to all those genres. If you know, like. mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So uh, pay attention. Be yep. Actually, if you're even your expert, you just might pick up a little something here or there that uh, may help you hook into that, uh, that one more fish or that one bigger fish. All right. So let's get started with Captain Dan talking about rods and reels. All right. Action. All right, Dan, so I want to get into bass fishing. I have no idea I walk into Bass Pro or into Walmart, wherever I'm at. There's, mm -hmm. It's just rods everywhere. There's reels. There's all kinds of how, you know, what's the best combination to go to so I don't have to try and guess, pick a bad rod and reel combo and really not have a great day on the water, you know, especially if it's a mm -hmm. sport I really want to get into. So what do we recommend here? So well, it depends on uh, what kind of equipment you're looking for. What are you looking for? Is spinning reel. Okay. Or are you looking bait casting? So I prefer a bait, uh, bait caster. Um, I think you have more control when you're working your baits. Okay. Um, it gives you uh, some more versatility, in my opinion. So you're talking about going to a Walmart or Bass Pro mm -hmm. or Tackle Shop. What do you buy? You can go from a rod that's just the rod is three hundred dollars, and a reel <laughs> three or four hundred dollars, right. or you can go with something less expensive. You know, I have three hundred dollar rods. They're sitting in the garage. I don't use them anymore because I basically used them up. Uh, mm -hmm. Not today. I have guides that are broken on and things like that, and I need to, to replace things. So, you know, for me, I like Lou's. You got uh, Halo. Mm -hmm. They have great rods. I go with Lou's. Um, you know, you can get away with something that's relatively inexpensive that's pretty decent. You know, uh, this reel is, happens to be a Lou's. Um, it's a hundred dollars. And my opinion is on bait casting reels, guys. The $100 price point is a good place to start. I've had some bad experiences with stuff under $100. Right, right. Um, and they can go all the way up to five or 600 but if you got it, good. But to me, it's not necessary. So I like lose this particular rod. It was not overly expensive. It was less than $100. Here we go. Yeah, so uh, line-wise, I fish a lot of braid. Um, if you're just starting out, something that might be worthwhile tip for you guys that are just learning to throw a bait caster go buy some inexpensive monofilament keep your clippers handy because you're going to have some backlashes more than likely mm -hmm. a lot of these reels though they can be set to where they cast really well um but uh it'd be a lot less expensive to cut off mono than it is yeah. braid so yes, I, I like this um you can get into a setup for that fish is calling him. <laughs> he is, isn't he? Uh, you can get into a setup for less than, way under $200. You can get into a setup for $150 bucks and you have a pretty good, uh, pretty good setup. Yeah, if, if it's something you're going to get into, you know, any, anytime you get into anything, it's always worth spending that little bit extra money for the quality mm -hmm. than trying to get out on the cheap and having a terrible experience and then judging the whole sport, whatever it is, based on lower end equipment that's not performing like you know just a few more dollars will you know make the difference right you know much more much a lot more fun out there much more pleasurable experience yeah. i know you you talk about the lose reels there i know mm -hmm. you can get that i don't know if it's that exact model but they can run you know around 100 bucks you get them at bass pro for 89 when yeah, they're on bass sale pro, one academy, of the academy. But, the, the lose lose puts out some nice combos yes, they do. yeah so yeah. i'll put this 
I had a fish follow that up. I was gonna mention too, when I started out I'll put fishing. The rod down. <laughs> oh, no, we'll go ahead and catch one on film. But no, when I started out, you know, this was years ago, you know, they didn't the technology was a lot different. So I had a bad experience with oh, yeah. day casters. I'm back classing, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm done after a day. And I spent about two hundred and fifty dollars on the reel, and I know it was a good two hundred bucks on the rod. And mm -hmm. it went straight to the garage and went right back to my spinning gear. Today now I use bait casters because they're the technology has mm -hmm. become smarter than me. So now I can just tweak a few little dials and things, and they're really right. pretty easy to use and learn how to use. And mm -hmm. and uh, really nice. I have one that I prefer. We'll talk about in a minute. But yeah. anyway, get it back to what you're. Yeah. So the, with the reels, like what you're saying there, the reels that I fish with now that are the hundred dollar reels, mm -hmm. they cast as well as my two hundred and twenty dollar reels. That I had 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Not better. Absolutely. I mean, so you can get a uh, a good reel at a, at a uh, good price point, and same way with a rod. Uh, you know, there, I have some problems buying a combo. Some of the combos that Lose puts out are actually pretty good. This spinning rod outfit here happens to be a combo. Right. I very seldom do I find uh, combos that I like because either the reel is not up the stuff or the rod, or the rod right. it's usually the rod that's to me is lacking mm -hmm. so uh, I prefer to buy uh, a rod and reel separate yeah you know yep. pick what you like and then we can get into a whole myriad of discussion on which rod to buy if you only had one or hopefully you yeah, right. yeah. That's, that's the thing about buying less expensive rods you can get more of them because you think I think of rods in my line of work they're a tool for what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, just like a carpenter's tools, he has a different tool to do a different job. Right. And some, yeah, you can drive a screw with a hammer, but it's a lot easier with a screw gun. So, uh, so if you, no, but if you out. had to just suggest, just as a, as a beginner starting out, you know, we talk about heavy, medium, fast action, these different, you know, there's all these little terms that go with it, you know, and that can be a little bit confusing for somebody who's just getting started. It's like, hey, what does all this mean? Just your recommendation for the starter rod i have my okay so one starter rod yep i would go with this one happens to be a medium heavy yep i would not go anything less than uh medium most of the mediums that you find are going to be light and now that varies with manufacturer right. and blank so you have to kind of dig into that a little bit uh, a higher modulus graphite is a more uh, sensitive rod. Okay. So I think a sensitivity when I'm talking soft plastics, when I need to feel that bite. Mm -hmm. Now I have another rod here. It looks the same as that this one. Yep. But this is a crankbait rod, and it's a much softer rod. As in the action, it, it's very soft and it's not as stout. But with a crankbait rod, I'm not feeling for a sensitive bite. I'm feeling the rod, the rod load up when I get bit. So right. it's a, two different animals, basically. Yeah. So Still need one though. One, this Just is what medium, I do. I would go with a medium. worm type rod because yeah. you can uh, fish other things than worms on a worm rod. Um, as you guys go along, you'll find that a softer rod, you'll lose less fish on mm -hmm. baits that have trouble hooks. Okay. So th I basically, if you're throwing a lot of uh, baits with trouble hooks, you're going to want to go with a softer, more forgiving rod. Um, if you're going to throw a lot of soft plastics and need some sensitivity, you're going to go with a higher modulus graphite, a little stouter rod. Okay, great. Real wise, and I use the Halo rods. Love them. Absolutely. Rod, There'll yeah. be a link down in the description on those as well. I'll send you over to American Payworks. Use Headwaters 15 uh, coupon code, and that'll save you 15%. Um, I kind of jumped back into the game with the Shimano SLX DC reel, which has a little chip in it, because I didn't want to, I had not used the newer bait casters, mm -hmm. and somebody had shown me this reel, and I gave it a try, cranked up to four, it's impossible to backlash. Yeah. I mean, it really is impossible. Drop it on a three, it's still pretty impossible. But it gives you that flexibility, keep dropping it down, and then making it just as, you know, um, down to one i don't ever leave it on one because i will backlash it but mm -hmm. but it's a good all-around reel it is a little bit more pricey it's about 189 bucks yep. but if you don't want to take that learning curve you just want to jump right in 
this will be one that I would recommend against SLX DC. Make sure it's a DC. It has a chip that somehow knows when the line starts to let off tension on the spool, then it says, hey, wait a minute, we're starting to slow down and it just kind of breaks automatically, which is pretty cool. And it has a cool sound to it. But, you know, that's what a lot of people like. I wouldn't buy a reel for the sound, but it is a good alternative mm -hmm. if you just want zero learning curve. But I yeah. do highly recommend those Lou's because I've used them since and they're great. They're just super yeah. easy to use. And they got a little dial on the side that you can tweak things up mm -hmm. to make it really difficult to backlash as well. Yeah, and the Shimano has regular SLX without the DC feature. And it's at around a hundred dollar price point yeah, as well. Yeah, right. So. A good deal. All right, well, I think it's time. That's, uh, so we got a good start. We're gonna go with a heavy medium rod. We're gonna go with uh, what pound on the braid. I mean, well, I know we talked about loading up with mono. Let's stick with mono. What? Okay, I would go with at least 15 pound if I'm thinking worming. Okay. Between 15 and 20 pound. Yeah, 20 pound sounds kind of, sounds kind of heavy, but you see the stuff behind us. It's thick vegetation. And you know, anywhere in Florida, you're going to be fishing around vegetation. So I typically don't fish with less than, you know, I have. Mm -hmm. I've caught some nice fish on 8 pound. But typically, I, if I'm fishing mono, it's going to be 15 to 20 pound. Are you in the, uh, if you're catching green fish, use green line school of thought? Uh, the, my some of my favorite mono is green, green or clear. Yeah. Um, I know some people. I know you use some of the red line. Some of the Cajun red works uh, good, but um, I can tell you, my son got rigged up with green, and we kind of put a test. And mm -hmm. I don't know. It's maybe it's just him, but he just outfishes with mm -hmm. the green line. It's just something about it. Um, I got that, and actually from place you used to work at years and years and years ago yeah there was, we were talking about lines and different things mm -hmm. and that was his big recommendation so okay so we're good on the line 15 yep. pound we're going to use the heavy medium action and we're going to go with a something along a lose brand real lose yeah. you know just about the hundred dollar price point okay should be good all right very good all right we're going to cut it here folks we're going to come back and we're going to talk about different types of baits dave's got one he's going to talk about one that he really likes so i'm going to cover one that i like and dan's going to cover something that he likes and these are going to kind of cover the whole water column so depending on where you're at this will give you an op you know you'll know what basically to start out using that's going to give you a really good chance at catching some real nice fish we'll be back in just a second all right so we've covered rods and reels we've got that set down now we want to go ahead and talk about baits we know there's a huge variety of baits oh, yes. just like there's rod and reels and you go down the aisles like i have no idea what i'm going to use Go out mm -hmm. to the water so what's your top recommendations you know without going overboard you only need a few baits to get started yeah. with so let's go ahead and jump into what those might be yeah i'm, I'm thinking of a, a young guy he's, he's right after school he's checking out some videos online mm -hmm. what do i need to do to go down to the local pond you know down the road from the house just something to get me started yep so this is what i recommend so this this is my must anywhere in the united states in my opinion you can catch a fish on a soft plastic so we're gonna talk worms. Chubby right. crawl, baby. <laughs> a ribbon tail worm and a swimming worm like the bopper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if I had to choose just one, I'd probably just go with a ribbon tail worm. And uh, some things to go with these worms, uh, you know. I'll cover the hooks and the weights in a, in a moment. Notice these are two different ones. This is a 10 and a half inch worm. This is an eight inch worm. So what I'm gonna show you with the hooks and weights can be used for any of these things along with things like a fluke style bait. Okay. You know, uh, swim baits and things like that. Uh, so it gets you started just a few things for Florida. This is called June bug. This color is probably more fish caught on June bug in the state of Florida than any other salt yep, plastic, man. okay? Uh, you can pick your colors. Uh, I like dark color for dirtier water. Mm -hmm. uh, more natural colors like watermelon or pumpkin for clean water. So, as we dig into things, you start wondering, well, okay, so now you tell me about the soft plastics. What about hooks? Yeah, hooks it's kind, kind of weight. important to yeah, hook you, up If a you fish don't have a hook, you're not going to catch fish. <laughs> right. This happens to be an extra wide gap. Kamagatsu. Otherwise known as EWG. You EWG may hear that term. Room. Yeah, Correct. EWG. So know that that's extra wide gap. Yeah, this one happens to be a three off. I can fish a 10 inch worm, an eight inch worm, or a swimming tail worm, all with a three off hook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a three off extra wide gap is, is a good place to start in this area. Now, we talk about weights. To me, you need two basic weights. One is an eighth ounce weight, 
Nope. Just a painted lead weight. And then a 3 16 ounce weight. The eighth ounce, if it's not quite wind, not real windy or and the water's not super deep, go with the eighth ounce. If it's a bit windy or a little bit deeper water, I like the 3 16 Yeah. So you can go buy two small packs of weights, or if you don't have the bucks to do it, just buy one, one weight, one size weight, and uh, one pack of hooks and a pack of worms. That's it. And you can go bass fishing. So a hook, a weight, and a worm, you're bass fishing at any lake in the country. Yep, absolutely. So that's, that's where I would start. And then you can branch out from there, mm -hmm. getting different colors, different sizes of worms, and eventually different weights for different purposes. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, the worm is the number one just default go-to. Sure. Every one bait. Every young it. man in the, in the United States that lives close to freshwater ought to have a plastic worm with a bullet weight and a fishing rod. Yep. You know? So a man could feed himself that way. Yeah, absolutely. Feed. Good. Okay. So if we're going to just uh, step up a little bit and cover a little bit, of some, just some basic recommendations if you're going to cover a little bit more of the water column. Okay. What, what might somebody use? All right. So let's talk, say, top water. There's okay. a couple of top waters you can get. Some like a, uh, like the walking base we talked about in previous videos. Mm -hmm. They take some... Uh, little finesse uh, little, some experience. You got to have some experience to be pace. proficient with the rod and yep. be able to get those baits to walk properly. But the thing like... This old bait is a is a pop bar. Mm -hmm. It's been around for mm -hmm. years Never. and years and years. Everybody has one. <laughs> you can fish it a lot of ways. It's probably my favorite topwater bait, though I really like my walking baits. Mm -hmm. This because you can fish this slow. You cast it up around cover, pop, pop, pop. Get it close, let it sit. Uh, it's a good starter bait. Uh, this happens to be an old storm chug bug. That's a good bait as well. Yep. So. They're simple to fish, and they're readily accessible at any any place that sells fishing. Tackle. And very Take effective. Very and effective. they're very effective for yep. a top water bait. Absolutely. So moving on from there, we hear everybody talking about chatter baits. They're, they're bladed, bladed jigs. Mm -hmm. That's a good place to start. This is a cast and reel kind of bait. This is, it happens to be a chatter bait brand. The colors vary. You know, mm -hmm. if you're fishing some really stained water, either a really dark color or a really bright color, you know, like white. Mm -hmm. um, I like this, we're fishing a lot of clear water. Uh, I like natural colored baits too. So a bladed jig, every man needs a spinner bait. I don't think they're throwing as much as they used to be Not because much. this is taking up a lot of that space. Yeah. Now, before we jump, okay. do we need to spend the big bucks on these things or can you to buy, buy a jackhammer? No, oh, I don't call think out so. the brand. There are okay. differences. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, I, and I'm not knocking the, the, the jackhammer. I've had people tell me there is a difference. Mm -hmm. And there very well may be. But you go from six bucks to 18 bucks for the jackhammer. <laughs> right. Okay, now there's some guys, they only throw a jackhammer. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, but we're talking starting out. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, I have many of these. So uh, I don't think it's necessary to spend a lot of money. Again, those are just starting out. Yeah, let's, right. let's keep it on the. Yep the price point a little lower and many of these that have caught many fish oh yeah yeah, yeah. no After, i agree the second biggest fish that's come into my boat out here was on one just like this except it was black and blue. yeah no. on a, just a regular chatterbait with a nine two yeah so the point is folks don't get caught up in the hype you're going to see if you're watching the pros and things like that and you're going to hear some brands that are really push their products and they are a high dollar you don't necessarily you don't need to spend the big bucks to get started. Find something that's equivalent to that style of bait and use it. They're still going to catch fish. Yes. Well, a certain brand maybe in certain circumstances catch more. Yeah, it could Sometimes be. Circumstances but it also it. it also it goes to the fishermen too though and how they're working. Right. So if you've got the experience, bigger bigger higher dollar may you know can make a difference. But at the right. starter level, you know, save yourself some money and just mm -hmm. go with an equivalent. Sure. Bait. Sure. And then uh, all over the USA, mm -hmm. good old spinnerbait. I've caught a lot of fish on a spinnerbait and some big ones. This is a big fish bait. Um, a lot of people back at, you know, when I was doing a lot of tournaments, you catch, you catch some big fish on a spinnerbait. Um, choices of color is up to you. I typically, if you had to pick one spinnerbait, uh, think about your water clarity. Uh, if you got really dingy water, uh, think of more thump. I think we talked about in some previous videos of vibration, mm -hmm. but don't get too caught up in that. Just go get your spinner bait that might look something like that and, and pick a skirt color, maybe white, white and chartreuse. 
Okay. Solid shirt. Just to start out, I would get a guy just a white uh, uh, skirt with either, you know, a blade combination like this, um, gold or silver. It doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. Just to start out. Okay. You know, if they're really chewing on spinnerbait, they're going to need a spinnerbait. Gotcha. Okay. Then from there, some other simple things. Um, you'll see this. This is a pretty ugly looking lipless crankbait. Uh, this happens to be a rattle trap brand. This particular bait's caught a lot of fish, and you can you can use them till they're not pretty anymore, and then continue to use them. I happen to like this one, and uh, you know I've got another one that's real pretty right next to it in the box. I'll throw this one because you know maybe it catches more fish. Right. This happens to be an older Yozuri brand, so they got a different sound of rattle. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, but a, a lipless crankbait is a is a great bait because you can throw this and get some reaction strikes. You know when. We've talked about it in mm -hmm. other videos yep. where, where we're talking about finesse and then we say, but yet on the other end of the spectrum, a bait like this can draw, you know, when it's really tough fishing, sometimes you can get reaction strikes. I've had it where tough day of fishing and pick up a lipless crankbait and smash them. Yep. So yep. that's a great bait. And then uh, one other thing, just on the, like a, a side note, uh, I talk about the square bills all the time. I got some tide on over here that we're going to go fish with in a little while. Um, square bills. It's, the choice is up to you. Um, if you're in really clean, clear water, I like more colors that are kind of natural. If mm -hmm. I'm in a little bit more stained water, maybe something with a little more white to it. Okay. Okay. So you'll notice that uh, each brand is different. This one. Has a really okay. loud deep mm -hmm. rattle. This one has nothing. Basically no. It has no yep. there might be a little rattle there. No, no rattle in that one is the yeah. So um I kind of prefer the ones without rattles. You know, if I'm fishing a really windy day, maybe I'll throw something with a rattle, but I'm getting too deep into it. But so maybe a square bill, guys, if you're fishing some areas where you can if you're fishing from the bank and you can cast out um, and not get hung in the grass a lot, this can be aggravating to, throw, to fish around grass, but I fish around grass all the time. It's highly effective. Yeah, and I was out yesterday just to agree with you, definitely, mm -hmm. using a square bill, and I actually didn't find any issues with the grass. I mean, it, it depends on where you fish. Yeah, but yep. I was covering a lot of hydrilla. Mm -hmm. But very easy bait to use. It's just throw it out there. You can change up the yeah, cadence and do things. But mm -hmm. it is an easy bait to use. Yeah. Yep. So. And these happen to be, this one is a, uh, I believe this is the Lucky Craft. And uh, I think these are both Lucky Craft. And the other that I really like as well is the uh, the Strike King 1.5. That's what yeah. this guy is here. Right, right. And uh, the hooks that come on them are pretty decent. This one has some Gamagatsus on it that I changed out. Mm -hmm. uh, but the hooks aren't bad. Uh, but I've caught a lot of fish, a lot good. of fish on these. All right. So it's a great way to start, great place to start. So. Sounds good. Now we need to jump over to Dave's favorite. All right, Dave's going to go ahead and talk about one of his favorite baits. He's the, the lake killer <laughs> with these things. This is the deal right here. It's you, could, you couldn't talk him out of these. You, I don't think he'd give you a million dollars he would give up using those baits. Well, I'm going to give up a big secret today. Yep. Well, coming from the saltwater side, these these are very effective on, bo on both so for saltwater and freshwater for bass fishing. It is the fluke. It's a simple bait to use. So if you're a beginner, getting uh, starting in fishing, I recommend you get yourself some fluke, uh, a fluke bait. Usually they have a normally they'll have, they'll have a, a sort of split tail. I rigged them up on these. One of my favorite hooks is the owner twist lock. So these have a little spring here called a bait holder. You, you twist it on there and they are weighted. So the heel of the hook has a, has a weight. This is a, an eighth ounce. I may, I may use a 16th ounce depending on the wind and the depth. So I also rigged these up weightless. So they are designed to be fish kind of a jerky motion. You cast them. And they, they just they just dart work them they dart and they it's a very reactive bite um, again depending on the wind I may go um, weightless just cast and let that sucker just float down as soon as it's in my, my experience when it gets near the bottom wham it, you'll get hit it's it, it's a it's a quick 
normally fish this bite, set, set the hook. I, I do a majority of my fishing is on a kayak. These are very, 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 very effective. The other, the other type of um, hook is the, um, these are Kamagatsus. These have the longer weight along the keel. So when you use this type of hook, the bait is going to sink kind of straight down like this. All right, with this, this forward weight, you're gonna get more of this action. I also Texas rig these guys. So if you put an eighth ounce weight up front, then you get more of that down, that down type of action. So you get, you have to experiment, figure out what works for you, what works for your lake, and what works for the for the uh, fish in your area. Now the two basic colors that I would recommend is this color happens to work very well in in this part mm -hmm. here in headwaters and a lot of the so in the um the lakes around here this is a silver flash mm, zoom. Can't believe you this said is it, it. i just loud. gave it away he said it out loud <laughs> very effective i it resembles a shad some of the other fish um it's just a color that works it's got that kind of kind of little green hue to it blue body with a silver bottom a great color Starting out, I highly recommend it. I right. think that'll work in any part of the country. And Zoom, if you're watching, you know, we're yeah. more than happy to accept the case of those. We'll <laughs> share them with some That's people. Right. But. And the other basic color, you can be white. Yep. So if you're gonna, if, if you've got just a few bucks, and you're in Walmart, you need to buy one pack, and I would go with the white. It's just a good all-around all color. You can use it in most days. Certainly, if you've got those bluebird skies, sun's out, mm -hmm. gotta go with the white. There you go. Yeah, and this is the other tail. No, no, it's a split tail. Same, Some of yeah. you will see just a straight a tail straight on tail. them. So yep. Either one's going to so work, Dave. You I prefer the little bait. split yeah, tail? Yeah, I, I prefer yeah. the split tail. Just gives a little more action back there. Yep. And again, you're going to rig it multiple ways to rig it up. Weedless. With That's a, the with, other nice thing, being weedless. With, with, I, also, I also use a, uh, again, depend on the wind. I may go with a heavier gauge hook, an extra wide gap hook. And that'll give you a little weight to get this down. But sometimes, just um, uh, just the weedless, just cast it out there and let the sucker just fall freely. Mm -hmm. Very, very effective. Or again, you can give it, you can give it that jerk action, or you can give it a swimming action. These also work similar to a swim bait. So it's a, it's it's one of the baits I first started out fishing against. I come from the saltwater world. Very effective in saltwater. It's and I one of the first baits I used for bass fishing. There you go. Right on. Love those baits. <laughs> and action. Yep. All right, guys and gals. Hopefully this video is going to get you started on the right foot when it comes to getting involved in bass fishing. It's one of the greatest sports out there. It's just a super time with, you know, whether you're out there by yourself, just getting some peace and, you know, be able to clear your mind. I know Dave really likes kayak fishing because he can just get out and just you know, clear the mind. A great way to break away from things or with your friends, buddies, husbands, wives. It's, it's just for everybody. So um, pick up on the advice that Captain Dan here talked about as far as the rod reel combos, the baits we talked about, Dave's fluke is, yeah, great. So um, with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Hey, yep. how you wanna finish this up? Hey, so if you guys are looking to uh, purchase a few uh, different type of baits, some of the ones we talked about or some of the ones we didn't talk about, Go to um, check out the bait selection at American Bait Works. Um, they offer not only um, baits and different variety of baits, they also have halo rods. And if you use the hook on Headwaters 15 coupon code, you get 15% off your entire purchase. Anything over, I believe $100 is free shipping. It's really a good deal. They got a good assortment good quality baits so check those out i want to give a tip to the guys that are fishing out here guys you know sometimes you struggle a little bit so um okeechobee craw is the color yes my wife outfishes me every time and i know some of you guys may go yeah well you can't fish no nope, she can fish <laughs> <laughs> she could just fish right okeechobee craw killer color that's the way to go find that bait one last thing thank you blue cypress lakeside cabins and Davis House Inn for being a channel sponsor. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for your support. Absolutely. Dan? I'm done, bro. What's your website? My website is fishhand.net.
So straight up fish, out. hand? Fish, That's simple. hand, dot net. There you go. Check out Captain Dan's site. You want to book a trip down here, make sure you check him out there. Or you can head on over to hookedonheadwaters.com and you can find his information there as well. So and, thanks. and Captain Jerry. Don't forget Captain Jerry. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward. Neat, neat airboat, airboat adventure. Uh, he's got some, man, he put up some pictures this week on... <laughs> They got some, he got some big ones over in Kansas. Mm -hmm. This information will be yeah. available right here as well. Yeah, absolutely. All, all right. right. That does it. Everyone, thank you for watching. God bless you all. Be safe on the water.